Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 26th of July, 2011. 48 years ago this day, SYNCOM 2 satellite was launched. It was the world's first geosynchronous satellite. So today's trivia question is, what is a geosynchronous orbit, and how is it different from a geostationary orbit? The answer will be given at the end. From the GOES X-ray plot we see that solar activity is beginning to rise. At about 1700 UT yesterday we had a coronal mass ejection and it was of the halo type which means it's either heading towards the Earth or away. We also had a seafarer earlier this morning which came from region 1260. If we look at the sunspot images we can see that region 1260 did indeed develop quite significantly overnight. However there are no other numbered regions on the disk. There is a new region coming over the northeast limb with a fairly large spot, but we're going to have to wait at least a day to see whether there are any other spots associated with it. There is a small region just west of Sun's center in the northern hemisphere, which is not region 1259, that died away yesterday, it's a new region and hasn't been numbered yet. There's also, from the x-ray data as you'll see later, a region coming over the southeast limb, but there are no spots visible on the disk as yet. Looking at the evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours, we can see the decay of region 1259 and the development of region 1260. If you go into full screen mode you can probably see the evolution of this new small region to the east of where 1259 was. It is perhaps even more clear in the magnetic movie where you can see the emergence of new flux just to the south and east of the 1259 complex. So now let's take a look at the transition region movie from the AIA instrument and see whether we can see where this coronal mass ejection came from. I've marked down here the positions of where I see major filaments, but none of them seem to lift off at the time of this coronal mass ejection, let alone produce a major eruption such as the sort you would expect to see in order to create a large coronal mass ejection. In the coronal movie I'd like you to concentrate on the east limb. We can see region 1260 well onto the disk, and there's another bright region right on the east limb probably associated with that large spot. There also looks to be another region yet behind that. On the southeast limb there's yet another region just coming on. The high temperature coronal movie emphasizes the coronal holes. The small one that we discussed yesterday is right on the west limb. However, the large one in the northeast is now nearing sun center and in the next few days will likely start affecting us too. In the SOHO coronagraph data, we can see the halo CME that started at about 1700 UT. But there didn't seem to be a likely event that caused it on the visible disk of the sun. So most, so most likely it was from the far side of the sun. We can check that hypothesis out by looking at the Stereo A data. And indeed, at about the right time, we can see a massive coronal mass ejection heading away from the Earth on the far side of the Sun. So this CME is not heading towards us, it's heading away. The ACE data show us that the solar wind speed peaked about midway through uh, yesterday and has been steadily declining ever since. The temperature and the density has remained about the same. The greater than 2 MeV electron flux actually has dropped by over an order of magnitude in the last 24 hours. Without any major flares, the proton flux remains at its base level. The auroral zones look a little bit more active than they did yesterday, and the KP index has been varying between 2 and 3. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B3 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 38, the radio sun intensity is at 87 solar flux units, the solar wind speed has dropped to 510 kilometers per second, with a density of about 1 proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are considered quiet. So my 24 hour forecast will remain similar to yesterday. The chance of getting intermittent sea flares is, is uh, increasing slightly but it's still not very good, but the chances of getting MRX flares I think is quite remote. The sunspot number will drift higher as these new regions appear. The chance of getting coronal mass ejections is quite good, the solar wind speed will remain lower, and the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours is quite low. Although as you can see from the background image here, we've had some nice aurora which are uh, featured on spaceweather.com. In the longer term there are still a couple of regions to come over the east limb, one in the north and one in the south, but apart from that there isn't much to be expected for the next two or three days. The answer to a trivia question, what is a geosynchronous orbit, it is an orbit that is 24 hours long, so basically the satellite remains in the view of the tracking station all day. However, a geostationary orbit is the same sort of orbit, but above the equator, so the satellite remains stationary in the sky throughout the day. A geosynchronous orbit is at an inclination to the equator, so it will move up and down in the sky in a figure of eight. So that's it for today, keep safe, bye for now.